Hello, future doctors. I suppose I will start by answering the most common question I get. How long did it take me to complete my dissertation? I was in the dissertation shell for nine terms. Here are a few other key highlights on my specific timeline. My prospectus was approved by my chair in my first term. I didn't have to make changes from my prospectus draft from my writing the prospectus course I took. It took me four terms total to write my proposal and have it approved. It took me four terms to collect data, more on that later. It took me one term to write chapter four and five and complete the final dissertation. When I first started my dissertation show and my prospectus was approved, I was excited and pumped and gung-ho and motivated and relieved and exhausted. And I thought to myself, I'll just take this first term to find some articles, like a small vacation, but a productive vacation. Take a small breather for a few weeks before hitting the books hard again. No, don't do it. I had motivation, I had drive, but I had vague goals, so it was easy not to meet them. It was around week 10 of my 12 week term, back then quarters were 12 weeks, that I realized I had done next to nothing. I didn't even realize how much time I was wasting because I had a goal I didn't understand. So my first piece of advice to you, set specific goals, set SMART goals. SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Set yourself up for success with goals such as, I will find five relevant peer-reviewed articles this week, read them, create an annotated bibliography, and organize my resources. Set a new goal for yourself each week, especially in the beginning when it can be a little easier to give yourself a short break and get off track. Uh, the Academic Skills Center has more information on setting SMART goals on their website. Once I figured out I had to set SMART goals, I began making real progress. But I found that I had a hard time finding articles relevant to my topic because I was not thinking broadly enough about the topic. The goal of the dissertation is to find the gap in literature, right? So make sure you are considering all avenues and search for articles that will help you build into your topic. For example, my dissertation was Gender Differences and Discussion Strategies of Online Asynchronous Undergraduate Psychology Major Students. I was looking for literature that was too close to this. Once I had realized I had to build my literature to justify the gap, my article searches went so much better. Breaking down my topic, I searched for articles on classroom discussion in general, gender differences in communication in general, communication in education, the growth of online learning, social learning theories, and so on. So, my second piece of advice, when conducting your literature review, consider the stepping stones that will lead you to your topic. Your dissertation is supposed to fill the gap, so explain the path that leads to the gap. Next, the literature review. Some of you may be wondering, so I will tell you now, my literature review ended up being about 25 pages long. I created my levels of heading before I wrote anything else. Uh, levels of heading are the main section titles. I used the topics I had searched for, and I started my pathway. Writing a 25-page paper feels a little overwhelming, but writing a 3-5 to five page paper is a normal Tuesday for a doctoral student, right? I broke my literature review up into 10 different little essays. I wrote one a week. Then I took a couple of weeks to establish flow between these essays. After one term, I had completed my literature review. No sweat. So, my third piece of advice. Don't become overwhelmed with writing your literature review as a whole. Break it up into manageable parts. Okay, so that takes you through my proposal journey. Gathering data. I struggled with this. A lot. It took me a year. I needed to collect around 125 surveys. The anonymous survey I was using had four demographic multiple choice questions with 15 Likert scale questions. Generally speaking, it would take less than five minutes to complete. I figured I would have my data back in a couple weeks and I would be done in no time. Wrong. Very wrong. In my first attempt at data collection, I used the Walden participant pool. After one term, I had two responses. Two. Speaking of which, help a fellow student out. Check out the Walden participant pool, and if you meet the requirements for another student survey, take it. I knew I had to find a different avenue for data collection. I went back to the IRB and got permission to advertise my survey via social media. This would work, right? Nope. I advertised through about 15 different social media social groups, and I had several psychology professors post the survey link in their classes. I collected about 17 surveys in the second term, a long way from 125. Back to the IRB. I decided to use SurveyMonkey's participant pool. Quarter later, I had 25 surveys. Back to the IRB again. What I ended up doing was using a paid participant tool. I paid SurveyMonkey $4 a survey to solicit participants. SurveyMonkey offered incentives for their participants. 
After I paid SurveyMonkey around $500, I had collected all of my survey responses within eight days. Done. So my fourth piece of advice, consider your data collection methods early. If you don't have direct access to participants, you might struggle to collect your data. Spending money on a survey collection service like SurveyMonkey can save you a lot of tuition costs. Have data collection contingency plans, several plans even. Going back to the IRB for approval takes time. My fifth piece of advice is to recognize your academic support system, your committee, but also all the services Walden has to offer. Your committee is there to help you. They are your support system. My committee member would often provide a lot of feedback, questions, revisions when I would submit to her. I was sometimes annoyed that she would want me to consider changes. It felt a little like I kept running into roadblocks, like she was challenging me. I now serve as a committee member on three dissertations, and I find myself sending the same type of feedback, questions, revisions to my students. I wish I knew then what I realize now. My committee member was invested in my study and encouraging me to challenge myself. She was excited about my dissertation. That is why she kept asking me questions. I had blinders on with regards to my dissertation. I spent so much time on the project that I couldn't see what I was missing. She could. So I hope you will see your committee's feedback and suggestions positively. Also, remember that they are people too, with lives as busy as yours. They have unexpected challenges as well. I loved my chair, he was amazing so I didn't really seek outside help during most of my dissertation process. Unfortunately, while I was analyzing my data, he suffered a stroke. He survived and has since suffered no long-term effects. He called me from the hospital and wanted to help me with my data processing, bless his heart, but he needed to recover, so I tried running my statistics on my own. Yeah, that was a stressful couple of days. So I reached out to Wolden for help, specifically the dissertation tutors, more specifically, Dr. Zin Tue. Within our one-hour tutoring session, Zen helped me fix my SPSS data errors, run my tests, create graphs, and run post hoc tests. A couple of weeks later, my dissertation was completed and approved. My very last piece of advice, even after your dissertation is approved, after you convert to a PDF, read your entire dissertation again. It may be difficult. Those last few weeks, it will seem like you're reading your dissertation every day. You will likely feel that you could recite your dissertation, so why read it again? My dissertation document was perfect. I had read and reread it so many times, I converted it to a PDF and sent it away. Well, in the PDF conversion process, any hidden styles or track changes will appear. The PDF reads the style and converts it. As a result, I have a hidden track change typo in my abstract. The abstract. Why not a random page like page 64? The abstract. Ugh. So please, 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 please read your PDF before submitting to ProQuest. Happy dissertating!